goes super fancy into routes because it's a big topic in itself and you can do very fancy things. In this case, I only have one route. You could have specific routes for only for product edit. You want the URL to look like that and such. But the, really the, the key point is that uh, whereas in standard web forms, you typically have a URL which points directly to the, where the physical file is. When you use routing, it's not the case. You have a, a URL that has a certain shape which gets parsed out by the routing engine and then gets mapped to the proper handler. So it's, it's quite a little bit of a mind shift when you're really used to seeing URLs that point straight to an ASPX file. So what else can we do about dynamic data? One of the things that it's really good at is, is validation. And we'll go earlier on, I showed you that when I created my domain service, it created two files. Catalog.cs is the one we've been spending most of the time on. We also have this metadata file. And what this is, is basically uh, something to get you quickly started. It has those metadata classes which are associated with each entity type. And in each class, for instance, products, it has a list of all the properties, so they are readily available to add metadata to it. And let's just show a standard dynamic data style thing, which is to take, say, units in stock and ask that the range of this should be only between 0 and 200, and we can specify a message optionally. Oop, bad range. Whatever. So I'll do this. And now, going back to the list of product and trying to perform an edit, I'll try to change units on order to a big number. And as I just try to tab out, oop, wrong one. Didn't work. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Applauding you now. Okay, so this is bad range. If I update, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, and, uh, oh, another thing I didn't show you is something like product name. If I try to remove it altogether, it automatically tells me I can't do that, even though I didn't specifically tell it to. The reason it knows is that it derived this information essentially from the schema, which it gets indirectly from the domain service. So it tries to flow as much information as possible from initially the SQL store to the domain service to the UI. And in this case, uh, this is really client-side JavaScript UI that's happening. So it's like as close to the user as possible, which means you don't even have to submit to get that information. So another cool thing you can do with dynamic data is that your, the rendering is very flexible. Right now, I really haven't shown you how dynamic data works, what are the files that make it work. But let's just focus on the UI for getting these units in stock. And right now, it's just a text box. Let's say instead we wanted it to be more of a slider control. Since we have a range for it, a slider is very appropriate. And out of the box, you can do that, but there is a very pluggable model where you, we have something called fill templates, where a fill template is a small user control that does the rendering for one cell. And here, I'll just go and add an existing uh, control that I've created ahead of time, which is on the fill templates. Again, the hard drive falling asleep. There we go. And it's called Integer Slider. And what I need to tell it to do here, oops, I'll give it what we call a UI hint. And now if I refresh, if all goes well, I now have this branch picker. And the really nice thing is, I'll take one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the way this is written, if I go in integer slider, in this particular case, it's using the AJAX toolkit, but you're absolutely not limited to that. You could use Telerik control or any third party control. It's very pluggable. Everything you do is very explicit in there. I just happen to have an AJAX toolkit slider extender in there. And some of the other things that we can do is fancier filtering. So if we look at this drop down here, we are picking one supplier. What if you wanted to do filtering and pick an arbitrary set of suppliers or of categories? The way we could do this is again, 
uh, on the dynamic data, I have field templates. I also have a concept of filter templates. By default, I only have a few, but I can import some fancier ones. And this time I have them under. That could get annoying. I have this multi foreign key uh, template. I'll just import that. And under categories, I'll tell it to use, now instead of a UI hint, it's a filter UI hint. And we're just going to use the one we imported called multi foreign key. And now we see that where we used to have a drop-down which only let us pick one, we have now a collection of checkbox. So say I want to get rid of produce and meat, I would just unclick them. And this happens automatically. So the idea is that this is just a custom filter that we wrote. You can write arbitrary filter. The way a filter is written is essentially you get an iCurable in and you get to do arbitrary filtering on it. You return a new iCurable, that's the query that's going to happen. And the nice thing is because, again, this is using link composition, this turns into a single optimized SQL query in the end. This is not uh, client filtering happening here. Okay, so um, are we doing on time? Yes, let's get back to our slide. And I want to also very quickly show you another demo to show that dynamic data is usable in scenarios other than those big scaffolding. So this little site here is a site that was written, is a, si a simple page that was written identically using dynamic data and without dynamic data. And I just want to show you like the benefit that that has. And here, if I click the tool style, we get this site where I can select something and I can edit it here. And if I go back to this one, it looks basically identical. Now what I want to show you is how differently they are written. And they also have all kind of validation going on, things like that. Oh, or, and uh, just a small note, like if I look at things that are URL, they are clickable, uh, email addresses go to a mail to URL. So there's all kind of logic that's in there. Now, if we look at the old page, Maximize the space again. What we have here, I'm going to go you know, fairly quickly in there, but basically it's a details view that has a bunch of template fields. And for each template field, you need to do a whole lot of work uh, for things like when you want to pick, let's go to edit again, and here I have a drop down for category. You need to do those things very, very manually where you have your drop down list and another data source in there. And for validation, you need to explicitly have all of your validators and so on. And it just goes on and on and on. And to do this fairly simple page, you end up having uh, 200 and so uh, lines. Now, looking at the same file or the same basic page, but written the dynamic data way, going down, we have, this is what our details view looks like. It just has one dynamic field per uh, field that you want to show. And the behavior of those fields is driven via the data model instead of being done explicitly. You don't 